Hello, Aaron Kubitz, personal trainer at Functional Aesthetics EC. Um, so Bruce Lee once said that life itself is your teacher and you are in a constant state of learning. I like to rephrase this by uh, saying that life is your best fitness trainer. Um, you know, a lot of times there'll be obstacles that come up in life and uh, rather than viewing them as excuses not to train, you can view them as opportunities to become stronger, to become uh, increase your mental toughness, to become more creative and more innovative. Uh, one of the key concepts of strength training or fitness in general is the concept of progressive overload or adaptation to imposed uh, demands. Um, we all know that we become stronger, we become uh, get more endurance by uh, increasing the difficulty level of our workouts. Uh, subjecting ourselves to either heavier loads, shorter rest periods, higher reps, or all three, um, ultimately causing us to get stronger. But then for some reason, when we will have a family emergency, we will get uh, not get enough sleep one night, or um, we will have to skip a meal because we got busy during the middle of the day or something, then we'll use that as an excuse to not train. Now, granted, uh, a lot of these things like not getting enough sleep, skipping a meal, or uh, training, you know, uh, a shorter workout are not necessarily going to make you uh, improve your performance. Um, obviously, sleep is very important to uh, increasing your fitness levels to uh, help you reduce fat, to help you build more muscle. Um, the results of your training are not achieved necessarily while you're in the gym. It's more in the recovery period afterwards. Uh, with that being said, uh, it will help you to maintain consistency, to help you with your focus, your uh, discipline, to show up uh, regardless of how you feel or what happened. Because we can't always, we don't live in a bubble. There's always going to be things that come up and get in the way. So just to make a commitment to yourself to show up. And in the process... A lot of times the things that uh, happen, so if you skipped a meal or if you ate junk because you uh, didn't pack the meal or you are tired because you didn't uh, plan your bedtime routine or you stayed up watching a movie when you should have been getting uh, to bed on time, um, these are things that you can think about, okay, well, why was it that I wasn't able to get that meal in? Why was it that I had to eat junk instead of health food? Why was it that I'm not getting enough sleep? Whatever the case may be, and come up with a plan for how can I avoid having that happen in the future. Um, one of the things that has helped me is, is like you train your, treat your training like a job, right? You can't just, uh, if you go out, say for example, you know, you're in your 20s or whatever, you go out drinking, uh, and <laughs> you can't just say, well, I'm not just going to show up for work. I mean, a lot of people do, uh, will call in sick and stuff, but uh, if you don't get enough sleep, if, you know, whatever happens, if you're tired, you still have to come to work, you still have to show up. So if you treat your training the same way, and say, you know what, I didn't adequately prepare, I'm tired, whatever, and you still show up and do the work regardless. And one thing I found is that if you do have a crappy workout, if uh, it doesn't feel good when you're doing it, it's going to motivate you to do it right the next time. But if you use that as an excuse to not train uh, because you're tired, because you're underfed, whatever, then it's just going to perpetuate that bad behavior. But if you say, I'm going to show up regardless and no matter what, and so if I don't prepare properly, I'm going to feel like crap. It's going to motivate you to prepare properly so that you will end up ultimately having better results and better goals, or, or not better goals, better results uh, and better progress towards your workout routine. Um, another thing that I uh, like to think about is uh, in regards to nutrition. So talking about that a little bit in meal planning and stuff, but Another very important reason to eat healthy food is uh, because of how it affects your hormones. I'm a big proponent of the quality of nutrition over counting calories. Counting calories is important. Ultimately, in the end, if you eat too many calories, you're going to gain weight. If you eat too little calories, you're not going to build more muscle. With that being said, oftentimes when you eat healthy food, things that are high in fiber, whole natural foods, high fiber, um, 
They have more water content, more nutrient density, higher in protein, healthy fats. Uh, protein is very satiating. So if you're bal- uh, building all your meals around good quality protein, uh, you're getting your vegetables in, um, eating your complex carbohydrates rather than a processed sugary junk, it's going to be a lot easier <clears throat> to hit your calorie goals. And if you are in that deficit, uh, you're going to have a lot more strength than somebody eating the same amount of calories uh, in that deficit eating processed food. So essentially you get a lot more bang for your buck. The other thing that happens, and this is another reason why I am a fan of periodically uh, doing fasting or uh, time-restricted feeding, um, allowing yourself to get to a, a pretty fairly low ebb as far as um, the food that you're bringing in, um, in addition to also for example, doing high volume training or going a really long bike ride, walk, run or something like that, that really kind of depletes your body is that it gives you a gauge of what being completely depleted actually looks like. This is another good example. So for example, with uh, strength training, ideally you want to push yourself to about a seven out of 10 in most of your training, right? Uh, Going to complete absolutely, absolute failure every time you train is not a good idea from a psychological standpoint as well as from a performance and growth standpoint. Um, going to about that 7 out of 10 or 70% of, um, of your full capacity most of the time is ideal for making the best gains in the gym. However, if you don't know what it feels like to go 10 out of 10, how do you know if you're going 7 out of 10? So sometimes going testing out what can I do if I go all out and I can't do one more rep or what can I do if I run or walk as long as I possibly can until I just can't do it anymore? And so then that will give you a more accurate gauge. The same thing with the, the food stuff. And so how this comes uh, relates to being busier, um, having, you know, you have kids you're taking care of, maybe you're working a full-time job and then you're taking night classes in the evening or something. And so you don't have as much time to plan those healthy meals and things like that. Um, it'll help you to naturally restrict your uh, your calories on days when you are training less because you're to have a better gauge for how much food you actually need when you are fully utilizing your nutrients on a day-to-day basis. So when you're not training a lot, um, you will be able to naturally bring that back. Also, uh, eating less processed food will also help with this. So for example, maybe you're eating like those, you know, two, three meals a day, and then you have a day where you are uh, busy or not, you're basically sitting all day long and maybe you do a fasting day. You just eat the one meal or something and, or just two, because you feel, you can feel it in your body that you actually don't need as much on that day. The other thing I think where a lot of, uh, guys when they get older go wrong is that when you were say, for example, a college athlete or something, although it would have been ideal to be eating whole foods and healthy food, a lot of times you can get away with not doing it because your insulin sensitivity is so high and it's basically like, you know, your muscles are like a sponge, right? So if you're always, you know, completely emptying them out before you fill them up again, you can be putting in, you know, processed junk and stuff like that and you will burn it off and you can stay relatively lean, um, especially while you're younger and you have optimal hormone levels. But if you continue doing that when you are, uh, working a full-time job, you know, you're, you're, uh, or you're running a business and then you're afterwards, you're running your kids around to their, uh, after school activities. And then you continue eating like you were, uh, eating and eating the foods more importantly that you were eating as a younger, highly, uh, trained individual. It's a one-way ticket to dad bod city. as like I say, so anyway, a little bit longer video today. Uh, hope some of that makes sense. And uh, if you got any comments, um, things you'd like to add to that, is there anything that I left out? Things that guys, when they get older, uh, tend to overlook and that could be sabotaging their fitness goals. Let me know in the comments below and we'll see you all next time for more health and fitness related information. Thanks guys.